welcome to the Simon and Connie show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> done. Yeah. That's it. Is that it? Yeah, is that's that it. It's done. Oh. And what we're going to do is, I'm joined by Connie Hook today, very kindly, and we're going to do a science-based quiz because Connie's book cooking no, isn't that weird i'm not it's the like, most annoying boy in the world please do i look the same as that? you're that? not no that's him okay He's i'm not getting you. splattered you're very unannoying you're okay. very lovely i'm not gonna splat let's, you. Let's, <laughs> no that's let's okay. this competition goes <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no. what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a competition with science questions okay and then if i win you get to answer five very quick five questions about the book. Okay. If you win, you still have to answer five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's a good time. And you get to go to the secret bits of the library. Oh, wow. We are so, okay. off camera, what you can't see is my husband <laughs> is doing the questions. I can see but Chris isn't going to help us cheat in any way, even though I will be. I'm dreadful at science. Don't worry. You're going to be just fine. <laughs> I'm going to win. <laughs> right. Are we ready? Ready. Ready as I'll ever be. What noise are you going to make? Ping. Oh, uh, that's what I want to make. It's good, it's good. Ready and poised. We're ready. Your first question. What K is a type of energy related Ping. to motion? Kinetic. Oh, Correct. Think. I couldn't even remember my noise. <laughs> uh, like, uh, uh, second work. question. Pearls are most commonly produced in what type of Ping. Ping. Oh. oh. Who you have it. Oh, okay. Oyster. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Third question. <laughs> What N is the longest river on earth? Ping. Oh, I was going to say ping. It. Oh no. <laughs> I forget my uh, no, no, you have No, no, you have We this. did it at the same time. You just no, said ping. No, I didn't. Ping. I just did the wrong thing. You're I was going to say Nile. Nile. Yeah, Nile is right. Have Correct. it. Yeah. What I is the coloured part of the human eye that controls how ping. much light passes? I Iris. should know this because it's my cousin's name. Oh, you did know it. <laughs> did know Iris, it. that is your cousin's name. I love how incredibly we be at 37. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this, Simon. Babe, you've got it. You, you've got it locked down. <laughs> Seriously. What E orbits the nucleus of an atom? Ping. Oh, God, I have no idea. Electron. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Well, that was easy because basically Connie won. Uh, it's not the winning, it's the that taking part. That was the part. Connie round. Oh. We've got a Simon round as well now. Oh, interesting. Did you yeah, notice we were that. spelling out Connie? Yeah. K-O-N-N-I-E. I didn't, but I was clever. I see what you've done there. Okay, right. Okay. Go for the Simon. What were the two ends? Nyland. Did you do any one end? <sighs> it's a good thing it's not a spelling bee for somebody. Uh -oh. Anyway, let's do the Simon. It means it's got the same amount of letters. Oh yeah, that's better. It's more just. It's what more... S is the name of the closest star to Earth? Oh. 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 Uh, closest star. star. Oh, ping! Ping, yeah. Does that mean planet? Star. Star. Maybe because I was going to say Saturn, but that was a planet. No, but you know this. You've got this. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. Not really. Haven't. You have. Tell him. Give him a clue. He knows the answer. Oh, the sun. Yay! Oh. Yeah. Okay. It, See, it kind this... of throws you because you don't think of him as a, him. Him? Uh, it. You don't think of the sun. You don't think of the sun as a person. No. Or a star. <laughs> I obviously or anything. do. Him? What am I on? <laughs> Huh. The mass of Earth is made up mostly of two elements, oxygen and which I? What letter? I. Ping. Oh, did you buzz? Ping? I did iron, but I think it's wrong. Iron is correct, 32%. Oh. 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 oh, What M do you call molten rock before Ping. it is erupted? Um, yeah, do you know it's magma? Big, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. It's a good word, that. Correct. It's good. It's magma. Magnificent word. What O is the name of the layer of Earth's atmosphere Ping. that... Ozone. Ozone. Which person beginning with N was the first person to walk on the moon? Ping. Oh, we've got him upstairs. Well, not here, what? literally. That'd <laughs> be amazing. Literally we've got some moon stuff up the universe. Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Correct. Have you got moon stuff upstairs? Hey, my friend Jen, in her kid's book, that's what she's called, the tortoise in it. Neil Armstrong. Mm. Nice name. She's Eight to Connie book. Hook, two to Simon Savage. Oh, dear. No, I don't believe that. You're just saying that. <laughs> Because he wants me to see the secret room, which <laughs> exactly. I get to see now. Oh yeah, totally. But five, quick five questions about oh, the yeah. book. Yeah. So first of all, why kids' book? Because children are the future. So there's all this... I was hoping you were going to burst into song then. I believe the children are a future. <laughs> but it's true, if you teach them well, then you can let them lead yeah. the way, <laughs> in the words of Whitney. <laughs> Basically, children are a blank canvas. They're shaping and forming in their primary years, some of their secondary years, but by the time you're in your 20s, you're shaped. By the time you're in your 30s, it takes years of therapy to undo the neural pathways in your mind. Um, and so it's really important that kids read books mm. because books 
studies have shown give empathy and if kids have empathy no matter where they go in life if they're the president of the usa yeah. the ceo of a FTSE 100 company they will want good and empathy makes you want to give back to society so kids if we give them an environment in which you know the perceived norms that we teach them are all brilliant and they'll grow up doing all the right things recycling not being greedy being charitable all that stuff and the world is a better place no climate change no poverty gap all okay. these little children quick question too mm. mm. how long have you wanted to write a book um i think i've always had a book in me i don't mean i swallowed a book when i was young but i've always had this i've always had this character actually so Ever since I was quite young in you know, our extended family, looking after other little cousins, mm. and then I had nephews, and you know, I've read, or I've told them stories about this fictional cookie character. So after I left Blue Peter, um, and we'd started doing the Blue Peter Book Awards, I went on to have my own children, who I read to every night. And so I don't know, I feel like I'm kind of, well versed in what children like mm. what children need and what children want so my youngest has just gone into school as well so the timing felt right yeah. to be able to have the time to devote to do a good job i didn't want to just write a book for the sake of writing a book i no. wanted to write a book to make the world a better place it's got good <laughs> awareness social awareness there's really good values it's got a real moral compass there's inclusivity, diversity. There is, and what I love is you don't do it in a, you do it in a just really natural, it's so yeah. just part of everyday it's life, not it's preachy. not even a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, I think that's quite important. I always think that education is, has got a bad PR because of almost the word education, whereas if it's stealth learning, mm. if something is fun, and then along the journey, you're also gaining knowledge or yeah. insight or good morals and values, then, you know, everything should be a pleasure and not a chore. Very I'm not sorry. very good at the whole third, quick third thing. quick fire question is, why science as a theme in the book? So in the UK, we have a real dearth of boys and girls, but more so girls, going into STEM learning um, and STEM professions. So that's science, technology, engineering, and maths. When my parents came over here in the 60s from Bangladesh, they came from a society in which being an accountant, being an engineer, being a doctor, you know, maths and science were the revered subjects mm. and the revered areas to go into as a profession and so they brought us here to give us a good education and um they brought us to a place where often it's sort of the flip reverse and people don't even know scientists that have made amazing mm. you know leaps and bounds and life-saving discoveries but you know they'll all know i don't know the contestants of love island or whatever often in my blue peter years i um, you know, would ask kids, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they'd be like, I want to be famous. But you don't, they, they didn't quite know why, yeah. what famous for, just for the sake of it. It's really weird because they've, my parents grew up in a world where that's kind of glamorous and cool. And like I said, kids just are subjected to these sort of perceived notions. Mm. And if we can sort of brand science as cool and flip, reverse it. So in the book, sort of science and knowledge is really cool. And yeah. it's all the sort of, I don't know, fashion and all that sort of stuff that's a bit uncooler. It's kind of trying to challenge No, it's brilliant. It's really, really well done. And also I love it because I, so. I really empathise with um, Cookie One because she's tangential, which I am very good at as people who watch yeah. this channel for any length of time will know. <laughs> waffle, waffle, waffle. But also because she, she says what she thinks and she's very forceful. Right? Sometimes misguidedly occasionally. Yes, but she's that's quite a real, misguided. That's a I real true say. character. Fourth question, what's your favourite kids' book and why? My favourite kids' book? I mean, for me growing up, um, a real sort of turning point in reading was when I read uh, Super Fudge by Judy Bloom. It's a sequel to I've Tales of the Fourth Grade. Nothing. Try Super Fudge. But I remember it's the first book that I read without pictures. And I was, you know, in primary school and sort of like didn't really like to read books without pictures. I was probably, I don't know, about eight or something. And I read it and I just devoured it. And I really came away from thinking, this is how grown-up books are written. Mm. You know, I just remember this bit of this kid's mum eating carrots and he picks up a carrot and then she drops the bomb that she's having another baby and he spews out bits of chewed up <laughs> carrot across the kitchen. And I remember really thinking, wow, that's, a, you know, I haven't read a book that's written in this way before. So I really tried to write my book to not patronise. Well, also you've got brilliant illustrations straight out as well, haven't you? Yeah, so there's a lot of comic strips which 
show Cookie's flights of fancy and her, the absurd thoughts going through her mind because her brain races at a million miles per hour. She'll often extrapolate a situation to the extreme in her head and, you know, like fear a the worst. Who's a <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. There is a scenario in which she decides that her teacher is literally like a big time money heist architect. Um, but yeah, that's how her brain works, really. And um, fifth question sum up your book in five words. Um, Funny, uh, I hate to say educational, but it kind of is. Funny, educational, quirky, informative, and left field. Like it. Well, Connie, thank you very much for coming on my channel. <laughs> thank you. And for the Connie and Simon show. Next time on the Connie and Simon show, there'll be experiments and fireworks. Yeah, when and we're we'll be chatting building. to... Oprah Winfrey and JK Rowling and Michelle Obama. It's going to be great. Yeah, we'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.